Good evening. Welcome as we celebrate the beginning of the Triduum with the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Just a couple of instructions before we begin, and we'll be giving you some instructions as Mass goes on as well, but at the beginning. We'll begin with the blessing of the regular bread and the wine that you all brought, and that'll take place in the commons. Uh, the cantor will invite you to face the commons when that time comes. It's a simple blessing in there, and then we process in uh, for the reception of the oils. The gospel today tells us of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. The mandatum, as it's called, takes place after the homily, and you're invited to take part of this reenactment. Again, instructions will be given to you at that particular time for coming forward to have your feet washed. Finally, at the conclusion of Mass, there's a solemn procession as the Blessed Sacrament is taken to its place of repose in the Saints' Chapel, at which time you'll be asked to kneel. Please remain in place here in the, in this, in the sanctuary until after the altar is stripped, after which you may quietly leave by the side doors, either that one there or this one here, um, or spend some time and adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in the Saints' Chapel. If you leave by the side doors, and we encourage that, if you're not staying to, for adoration, we don't want you going out through the commons. Leave, either leave by the side door there, or this one here would, would get you out on the parking lot as well. The bread that, you receive, that we bless tonight will be distributed to you as you go out through those side doors. If you decide to, and we hope you do, spend some time with the Blessed Sacrament in adoration, the church will be open until 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, you can come back if you don't want to stay and come back for a little while there, but someone must be here the entire time that the Blessed Sacrament is exposed. Uh, bread will be available in the commons when you leave after the adoration there. So give us a few moments. The cantor will invite you to uh, uh, take part in just a moment as we get ready to begin. Tonight, we begin the Triduum celebration of Jesus' Paschal mystery. We are reminded not only of his love for us, but also of the reconciliation his love accomplished. We are gathered in spirit with the apostles to receive from Jesus the great gift of his own flesh and blood, as if it were for the very first time. We celebrate a foretaste of the heavenly banquet where one day we'll be greeted by Christ himself as our host. Our entrance song will be number 501, Glory in the Cross, number 501. Let no one here be a stranger. Please stand and take a moment to welcome each other to this holy place. And then turn and face the main entry where our liturgy will continue. As part of our celebration this evening, wine and regular bread have been brought to us. The wine will be used for our liturgies throughout the year. And as you leave through the commons or the, at the conclusion or by the side doors, each family will be given a part of the bread, blessed but not consecrated, to be shared with your families during the holy days ahead.
have saving love in body and soul. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Gracious and loving God, you anointed priests and prophets and king of old with the oil of gladness. You infuse the church with the gifts of the Holy Spirit and heal, comfort, and sanctify those anointed with oil in your name. Let these vessels remind us always of your sacramental mysteries. May the holy oils kept here, the oil of the infirm, the oil of catechumens, and the oil and the holy chrism, confirm our unity in faith and prayer with our bishop and with all members of your church, and be effective signs of the love that you pour into our hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel. On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must produce for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus. When I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. and 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during the supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, Jesus rose from the supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet. They dried them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon then said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. And for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put on his garments, he reclined at table again and he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should do also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
My dear friends, today is Holy Thursday. And it is the first day of our Pascal Triduum. Today we celebrate the institution of the Holy Eucharist and also the institution of the ministerial priesthood. So today is anniversary for all the priests. So we pray for our priests that God will continue to strengthen them in their ministry. Today we celebrate a feast of love and service. A feast of love and service. There was this husband who one morning he was feeling very romantic. So he looked at the wife in a very tender way and said, do you love me? The wife was busy in the kitchen pretending as if she didn't hear him. The husband said, we've been married for 30 years, and for all these years, you hardly tell me that you love me. Do you love me? The wife was busy with her chores. She didn't mind the husband. The husband was very, very hurt. So he said, yes, I know you don't love me. That is why you don't even tell me that you love me. The wife stopped what she was doing, looked at the husband in the face, and said, for 30 years, I have been cooking for you breakfast, lunch, dinner. I set the table before you. I wait on you to finish eating. I wash the dishes. I do your laundry. After that, I take care of your children. If this is not love, what is this? My dear friends, the wife was right. For her, love is not just a word. It's something that you do. Love is action. But for the husband, he only wanted to hear, I love you. And that is the mistake sometimes we make. My dear friends, love is an action word. Today, Jesus is not just telling us he loves us. He's proving it. So the readings will tell us, Jesus loved his own in the world, and he loved it till the end. Today is a feast of love and service. Let us look at our readings for today. Our first reading from Exodus 12. It is God saving love for the people of Israel. They have been in Egypt for 400 years as slaves. God sent Moses and Aaron to go and then redeem the people of Israel. So they went and there was a confrontation between Pharaoh. He would not allow them to go. So God decided to inflict plagues on the people of Egypt. So the first one turning all their waters into blood. It continues with flight, with boils, all that. And then the last one will be the killing of all the first bonds of the Egyptians. And this is what the people of Israel in our first reading were preparing for. Their first Passover. This will prefigure the celebration of the Eucharist. The lamb that they were supposed to sacrifice, we will no more sacrifice lamb here, but the Son of God sacrificed himself for us. They were supposed to eat as pilgrims. We are all pilgrims on a journey. This place is not our home. So as we come here, we also celebrate the same Passover feast, but in a different way. One thing I would want to draw our minds to is this. This Passover, the instructions that they were given, it was given in the context of a family setting. It is not an individual affair. So you would hear the readings would tell them that they are supposed to eat as a family. And even if a family is too small for a whole lamb, they should join another family. It was given in the context of a family. My dear friends, this is not an individual affair. Whenever we gather here <coughs> for this Passover, we gather as a family, a family of love. We are not just strangers gathering here. We are family. And I would always say, even in the Eucharistic prayer, it, it says it clearly. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, not my dear individuals who are coming here for 
communion. No. We are a family, a family of love. As family members, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to care for one another. The concern of your sister should be your concern. The concern of your brother should be your concern. We live as one. Let us ask ourselves, when we gather here, do we see ourselves as family? As a big family of St. James, St. John, Sacred Heart? Or we see ourselves as individuals? Today is a reminder of that saving love for us. During the Passover, they were supposed to celebrate it in the context of a family. Let us strive to live as brothers and sisters. Now, they were saved because of this lamb, but now we are saved because of Jesus Christ, that one lamb who died for each and every one of us. So we celebrate the institution of this Holy Eucharist, a meal of love, a meal of sacrifice. In our second reading, Paul will write this wonderful letter to the community in Corinth. What was happening? They were also celebrating the Passover, this sacred meal, but they celebrated it like an ordinary meal. What happened is that usually they would gather in someone's house, someone who has a bigger house, and then they also celebrate this feast. And they would all bring their food. When they bring their food, <laughs> they would eat it themselves, instead of them to share it with one another. So the poor, those who may not have, they would come and then they would go hungry just because people would bring their food and then they would just eat it themselves. They saw it as an ordinary meal. So Paul would write to them and tell them, this is not just an ordinary meal. You are celebrating that one sacrifice Christ offered for you and for me. He said, this is my body, this is my blood. My dear friends, when we come for Mass, we don't just eat bread. We don't just drink wine. It is Christ who offers himself for us. Do you see the Eucharist as Christ? If yes, what should be your disposition when you come for Mass? Do you receive Christ in sin, knowing well that for so many years you've not gone for confession? Knowing well, for so many years, you've not even made an effort to live a good life. How do you receive Christ? You are just behaving like the community in Corinth. It is the body of Christ. It is the blood of Christ. Let us receive it in a worthy manner to appreciate the love God went through for us. In our gospel reading, we also see Jesus at supper with his disciples in the middle of the meal. He got up, he took a bowl, and washed the feet of his disciples. Peter would object, but Jesus would explain to him. And then he would say, you call me Lord and Master, I have washed your feet. Do same as I have also done. Now, what is this washing of feet? What did Jesus do? Is it just a mere washing of our feet? My dear friend, there is more to it. And this is what happened. In Palestine, the popular means of transportation is your legs. You would have to walk. People walked for long distances to Galilee, to Jerusalem. And wherever the go, let's say you are journeying to Jerusalem. By the time you get there, your feet, they are tired with sores, blisters, with dirt. The disciples really understood what Jesus was saying. So it was a custom, this wasn't something new, that a household, the, the master or the leader of the household would make sure there is provision for water for guests whenever they come to wash their feet, at least to soothe their feet, to clean their feet. It was a sign of hospitality. So this is something that was going on in Palestine. It was common knowledge. But it is usually done once you enter into the house, not when you are at table and in the middle, no. 
So you see, Jesus is trying to bring their minds to something greater. It is not just a means of hospitality. It is not just a means to make sure your feet are clean. But he brought out a deeper meaning. It is of love and service. So at the middle of the meal, which probably their feet might have been washed before they entered, he stopped the meal. He took a towel, wrapped it around his waist. The washing was done by slaves. He went down and then he washed their feet. He was telling them, this is not something for just slaves. It is something that each and every one of you, you are supposed to do. Do what? Just wash your feet? No. Serve in love. That was the meaning Jesus was communicating to them. So as humans sitting here, husbands, wife, how do we wash each other's feet? As a husband, you can wash your wife's feet knowing well that your wife always is in the kitchen cooking. One day you help her in the kitchen. You are washing her feet. You tell her, it's okay today, you are not cooking, we are going out for dinner. You are washing her feet. Realizing that your wife is always taking care of the children, one day you come home early, you help her take care of the children. You are washing her feet. Making sure that you are faithful to your marriage promises. That is the way to wash her feet. Not just take water and then wash. Anybody can do that. That wasn't what Jesus was saying. He was giving them a deeper meaning. As a wife, how can you wash the feet of your husband? Helping him also in some of the duties of the house. As a child, how do you wash the feet of your parent? Being obedient and listening to them. It is of loving service. That was the message Jesus was communicating to them. It wasn't just about physical washing of feet from death. No. It's about love and service, humbling ourselves and serving in love. As humans, we always want to be raised up. Even you go to a program, they are mentioning names and you've done something good. They don't mention your name well, you are angry. There is doctor, doctor here. You didn't mention it. We are supposed to serve in love. Let us ask ourselves, are we washing each other's feet or we want to be served? Peter resisted Jesus from washing his feet. Now, Jesus told him, if you do not let me wash your feet, you would have nothing to share with me. The words used is, you would not have a share in my inheritance. Now, we all know what inheritance is. It's something that someone leaves after he or she is dead. So, this is what Jesus was saying. If you don't allow me to wash your feet, take away that Things that makes you dirty, your sins, me dying will not benefit you. I went on the way of the cross. I am going to the way of the cross for you, for your sins, to share in that inheritance. If you don't allow me to wash your feet, not physical washing, but taking away that sin, things that makes you unholy, my death won't benefit you. My dear friends, like Peter, most of us are preventing Jesus from washing our feet. We are holding on to our sins. We are holding on to our mistakes. We are holding on to the things that prevent us from sharing in the inheritance of Christ. If we don't allow Jesus to wash our feet, his death will be in vain. This children will be in vain for you. He is asking you, Allow me to wash your feet. Stop holding on to your dirty foot. Let Jesus wash it. So that as he mounts the pole, the cross, you would have a greater share in that inheritance. He is calling us also to wash each other's feet. Serve in humility and in love. As we go to this holy tribute, let us avail ourselves to all the graces that comes with it. Jesus is asking you, let me wash your feet so that you would have a greater share in what I am about to do.
May the good Lord bless us. Amen. Amen. His father spoke so elegantly about washing feet. Jesus calls us friends and he washes us with his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness. As we prepare to celebrate the mandatum, now the washing of the feet, we invite any and all of you who wish to come forward. One or three or four stations, will, three stations will be set up here, one in the center, one on either side. We will wash your feet, dry them, in remembrance of what Jesus did for those he loved, as he loved us as well. You may wish to wash the foot of another person, perhaps your spouse, a child, a parent, sibling, friend, or even someone that you had a falling out with. Remember that Peter protested, but then welcomed that washing. In forgiveness, Jesus washed Judas' feet as well. If you just give us a few moments now, we'll prepare the stations and then please come forward as you're moved to do so. We'll wash your feet. You may wash the foot of another.
Let us rise, my dear friends, as we bring our prayers and petitions to God, our loving Father. That the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, may always be our treasured food on the way to sharing in Jesus' heritage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those in authority in the church, that they might show in their deeds what they preach in word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That everyone may know that we are the Lord's disciples by the way that we love one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That while we observe these three days of Christ's passion, we can accept the full message of the journey through the desert from slavery to freedom and from death to life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a swift end to the war in the Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, other troubled parts of the world, for all humanitarian efforts on behalf of the refugees, and for peace throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For each of us in the Catholic cluster, <coughs> that together with all Christians, we will recognize, honor, and worship our Lord Jesus, truly present in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all of our special intentions, those that we hold deep in, hearts, in our hearts, that they will be heard and answered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray. God, our Father, this day is a memorial feast for us. Help each of us to live our Christian ministry in service of one another's needs. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my dear friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself at the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat this flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clean. <laughs> Merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. We offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Barry, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, 
Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merit and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to acknowledge, bless, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your Son, your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, this is today. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your gracious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before you with a sign of faith, 
and rest in the peace of Christ. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who do unworthy, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through him, you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him, you sanctify them, you fill them with life, and bless them and bestow every good blessings upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another now a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.